Well, if you saw the first video on my Tika T1X out of the box review, then you knew that there was another video or two coming up. Hi everyone, it's the 4Gun Guy. And today we're going to talk about upgrading this out of the box Tika T1X that we already shot at the range. We did some, got some really good groups with it. Uh, but now everything has come in for the upgrade. So we've got a lot to take care of today. And what I wanted to do is just walk us through all of the parts that were ordered. And then we, uh, I think I'll do a real quick install and then we'll see what the final product is. We're gonna take it to the range and we're gonna see how this thing shoots. So if you're ready to go, let's get to it. Well, let's start off with the uh, upgrades, uh, what we've purchased and what we're gonna put on this, uh, this Tika T1X. Um, I'm gonna put the uh, spreadsheet over here so you can see it, but basically I'm just gonna start running through this stuff. The very first thing we're gonna do is mount this barreled action in a new chassis from Oryx. So this is, uh, is a uh, chassis specific to the T1X and other rifles, but this one is specific to the T1X. I also have a X-ring compensator we're gonna put on the end of that barrel. I have from Anarchy Outdoors, a trigger spring that's gonna reduce the trigger pull from two pounds that it is right now down to about a pound. Uh, I've got an extended uh, mag release from Anarchy Outdoors. I've got the Seiko uh, quad tactical light knurled bolt handle. This is a little longer, I told you in the first video, than the bolt handle that comes out of the box. Uh, these are just some mounting bolts. Buttstock wheels, so I can more easily adjust this buttstock. Uh, butt pad spacer kit, so I'm gonna add a little, a little length onto the butt pad here. Uh, so I've got a better length of pull. And then I've got a sling swivel stud mount. And last but not least, remember what I said about this, I really wanted this to kind of mimic and uh, my PRS rifle, so I could use all of my Arca rail accessories. So I'm gonna mount this Arca rail onto this Oryx chassis. Hey guys, be before we go any further, I, I just wanna say, um, and again, I don't make anything from any of these companies, but I just wanna say how impressed I am with this Oryx. Uh, their packaging, the products, uh, this chassis is, is just, awesome the the fit and finish of this thing if you really look at this let me bring this over here i mean this thing is beautiful now i was worried i'm going to be really honest with you i was worried about this plastic right i was like yeah i'm not sure i want a bunch of plastic on that thing uh, but I, I have to tell you i really like the color um, but their machining is is unbelievable i mean look look at this down in here look, look at the machining on this if i can get that this thing to focus really really top notch i mean this is this is really good quality so i'm i'm just really very impressed with uh with what i see so far uh, i've got about a 10 step process here so the first thing we're going to do is remove the action from the uh, uh current uh a chassis that it's in, the T1X chassis. While I have it out, I'm going to upgrade the trigger spring uh, and then I'm going to install the buffer uh, spacer kit, the Arca rail, the sling swivel stud, the buttstock wheels, uh, all into the um, Oryx chassis while I have the, while I don't have an action in it. And at the same time, I'll, inst I'll install the extended mag release into the uh, action. Then I'll install the action into the chassis. Then we'll install the bolt handle and then we'll install the compensator uh, as the final piece. So let's get to that. <clears throat> let's do our first step here and remove this action. Let me get this thing off of here. This, there, that's that. And then of course I just come in here, break that free, that's that. That's coming out. We've got another one of those we're going to put in. And so then uh, make sure you've got something like your fat wrench or a torque uh, inch pound wrench. 
generally speaking, and I'll probably say this again, when we're uh, putting the uh, action in, uh, especially on the uh, factory uh, action, it seems to like 30 inch pounds uh, of torque. So with that being said, so let me do this. And if you notice, I'm kind of holding this by the barrel here. And then we're going to... Should have issues. There we go. Sorry, just had, to, just had to use a little muscle. So there we go. Step one complete. Old chassis is out. And uh, let's go ahead and look at upgrading this trigger now. All right, well, in according to the instructions, what you want to do is this trigger adjustment uh, screw right here. You want to make sure that, that, that that's pretty much in because as you can see right here, if you've got it torqued all the way out like I did, it could interfere with this trigger uh, housing bolt here. So then I'm going to take a five millimeter uh, T. I'm going to break that. I'm going to bring this. I'm keeping my other hand on that. Bring this out. Where is that thing? There we go. So now we've got the trigger assembly out and now we have the trigger out. So now we're going to replace the spring. Okay, let's take this uh, spring out now. I have read and seen in other videos that they really caution you on uh, this trigger housing. Let's see, here it comes out. And then what you want to make sure of is just always make sure of, you know, how things come out. So you can see that the short side of this plunger here, if I can get up into here, the short side of the plunger right here, this side is where the spring will go. So just kind of remember stuff like that. This is the original spring. And there are other places you can get these springs. Um, one place, I won't mention the name, but some people said they've had some billing issues with them. So I like Anarchy Outdoors. This spring is a lot less, or a lot more springy. It's springier. And I'm going to put that down in there. I'm going to take this other spring, put it up here in my whatever area. And then I've still got this adjustment screw. I'm going to just make sure when you're putting this thing back in that you are making sure that you're not cross-threading this thing. Okay? And then I'm going to I'm going to really screw this in quite a ways here uh, just so we have enough room clearance for that trigger housing bolt. So then I'm going to take this out trigger housing bolt that we had Trigger back in here. Come on, there we go. Make sure I'm lining this up. Again, I don't want to strip things out. And guys, I know, you know, some people are probably going, ah, you left the scope mounted on that action. And yeah, those Seekins, uh, those Seekins rings are pretty darn good. And now I've put that in there. I'm going to just Tighten that down. Not too tight. Tight enough. And there we go. So let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Huh? Wow. Just even, even with that thing on, uh, screwed all the way in there, that's pretty, that's pretty light. Let me see. Uh, let me see. I'm going to back this off. Back this off. Well, all right, so let's see here. Before we put this back, or before we're going to put it back in the action, let me do uh, now again. I just have my little cheapo, uh, my little cheapo uh, trigger pull gauge here, but this should at least tell us if it's That is, that's about a pound and a half right there. So let me pull this out a little more, just for, 
S and G's. Let's see what that did, if anything. And again, guys, I am not going to run this thing at like, you know, eight ounces or anything like that. That's right, a little over a pound right there. That's a little over a pound. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do one more just to make sure it's it's a little over a pound. Uh, I don't like taking chances. Yep, I, that that's right at a pound. So uh, I'm gonna leave that. That's good. So we've installed the, uh, we've removed the action, upgraded the trigger spring, and now let's do some work on the uh, new chassis, and then we'll put them together. Well, guys, here's the uh, butt spacer kit. Pretty self-explanatory. I mean, this is very easy to, to do. You just have these spacers. You're going to put them in here. And I'm going to use four uh, to start with because uh, I, I do have a pretty long uh, reach. And so uh, I want a pretty, pretty long length of pull here. So let me, let me speed things up and we'll get this on. Well, there we have it. We uh, have our buttstock spacers in. Uh, don't tighten these too tight or you could strip out those uh, threads there. So. With that being done, the next thing to install is the Arca rail. Well, as I said, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this, probably kind of glary, but uh, excellent instructions from these guys. The product quality is, is just awesome. And here's the thing. What's kind of cool here is this, this fore end kind of slopes back here. If, if you can see that, see how it comes up and then it slopes back. This Arca rail does the same, so it's a perfect fit. And then you've got that, uh, see, I've already nicked it up. And then you've got the, uh, the nice flat finish here. So the instructions are really easy. Uh, let me go ahead and do those, uh, set this thing up, and then we'll move on. All right, there we have it, Arca rail installed. So uh, let's see, what's next? Uh, the sling, we're not gonna do that. Uh, buttstock wheels, I'll put those on there. Okay, so these, uh, these cheek adjustment nuts are just eighth inch, and they just come right out here, right? They're just some, some uh, Allen screws, not nuts, sorry. And then these, so now you can just, uh, and really, you know what, guys, uh, all I want to say here is, you know, these things are 10 bucks. And trust me, that it's worth you paying $10 for these things. Uh, and when you're out there in the field and you have to make an adjustment, you've got these screws instead of having to open up your bag, uh, get out an eighth inch Allen wrench and, uh, and do that. So there you go. That's that. You've made that adjustment. Some simple things. You know, hey, is it 10 bucks kind of tick you off that they couldn't just put these on there? Yeah, maybe, but you know what? Still a good, still a good product here. Okay, we've got that. Uh, I'm going to install the uh, mag release, and then we're going to get this action in the chassis. We have our uh, extended mag release here. Um, I just put that in. Let's go ahead and test that. Yep, works fine. And now it's time to put things together. So let's go ahead, get this action. Let me come down here in the chassis. There we go. Then I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to make sure I line up the bolts. That's pretty, that's a pretty important uh, piece there. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty good. I've got my torque set to 30 inch pounds. There we go. Just kind of tighten that up. 
And of course you're going to stay in there on me. Awesome. Make sure that's kind of tightened up and then we will torque 30. Torque 30. There we go. So I think we're good there. And if I am not mistaken, the last thing we're going to do is install the compensator. I'm going to take this crappy plastic thing off of here. And yeah, we'll just see how this turns out on this thing. Kind of. I'm not going to go overboard with torquing it and all that stuff. Uh, doesn't really say. This is really for a 10, 1022 rifle. I actually think it looks kind of cool on this thing now. You know? Uh, I think that looks pretty good. So, let's zoom out and see what we have. Right now, that's a pretty heavy little 22 rifle. Um, I didn't weigh it, uh, but I will go weigh it and then I'll put it up on the screen here. Let me do some cycling on this thing here. So let's look at the, uh, I'm gonna do it like this. So again, it is unloaded. There's nothing in it, guys. This is an unloaded uh, magazine. And I really like how this is fitting here, right? You've got the magazine here. You've got a little barricade stop here. And I do have an ARCA barricade stop that I, I can put on here and I will. Uh, but I really like that. This mag release is much easier to get to now. It's kind of, <laughs> I just had to search for it. And I'm going to have to get used to it. But it, 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 it's really just exposed. Whereas before it was kind of in this little cubby that you had to, uh, to kind of feel out. It's really exposed very well now with running the bolt. Look, I love this extended bolt handle. This thing is awesome. Way out here, really easy to manage. Yeah, I like that. And then the trigger, man, that is so crisp. Listen to that. Wow. All right, man, I, I tell you what, guys, I can't wait to get this out to the range. Run some uh, ammo through this. Run those same three types of ammo that we did when this thing just came out of the box, when the T1X just came out of the box. Uh, the other thing is, I like the way that compensator looks on there. I think that looks kind of cool. So look, uh, let's get out to the range and get some shots uh, down at some targets. So I've got the target set up down there. I did just re-zero the, uh, the scope for being in this chassis and everything. Needed a little adjustment. And um, yeah, let's put some uh, rounds down range and see what we end up with. All right, so we're going to, uh, to shoot these three. So the first one I've got is the Midas Plus. The second one I'm going to shoot is the Ely Match. And then the third one I'm going to shoot is the Ely Club. Now again, this is just to see the, um, the, uh, any change in accuracy with this new chassis and all the upgrades. Now I will also be cleaning the rifle in between each string, just like I did when I fired the strings for the stock rifle. So I'm not going to bore you with showing me firing all these things. Let me shoot them all and then we'll look at the results. Guys, I'm telling you, uh, I just completed the uh, the ammo comparison for the three ammos against uh, the stock version of this and I think it looks pretty good. Uh, let's just talk about the upgrades and what I think of them so far. Uh, number one, I'm, I'm going to revisit this Strike Eagle and say I'm glad I got this scope. I just love this scope on this rifle. Uh, number two, trigger. Remember I put the new trigger spring in, uh, reduced it down to about a pound. I think it's still a little heavy. Uh, I may even go a little lighter, but I don't want to go too much lighter. Uh, but it's still a very crisp trigger, especially with that new spring in there. Uh, the chassis itself, I mean, this thing is just stable. Uh, I am loving it. And the Arca rail on the bottom here with my Atlas uh, bipod on it and my little jury rigging here, uh, if I can remember, 
I'll, I'll tell you what I did, what I did here. Uh, it's a very cheap and expensive option to get your, like, like this Atlas, a bipod has a Picatinny mount on it, right? Well, my other one uh, that I use for my PRS rifle has an Arca rail mount uh, clamp on it. This is a Picatinny clamp. So all I did is on Amazon, I'll put this up here in the thing somewhere. I ordered the same uh, little Arca rail attachment that I did for my, if you watch my uh, uh, Magneto speed video, I ordered the same exact attachment for, I think it's 13 or $14. Then I had a, a uh, two hole Picatinny rail that I just drilled out a little bit, put it into this mount and mounted this uh, uh, bipod to it. Guys, the whole thing was, 15 bucks versus if you go online and if you do find something like this, you're going to be paying 40, 50, a hundred dollars for it. These are the little things I was telling you about that if I can save money on, I'm going to save money on them. Now, does this look fantastic? No, it has a knob sticking out over here on the side. I don't care about all that. It's going to be fine when I get into a match. I can, I can tell, but back to the rifle, uh, length of pull is really good on it. Everything seems to be running uh, fantastically. I do have a vertical grip uh, that I forgot to mention in the video coming from MDT. It's in, the, it's in the mail right now. It should be here. And I'm going to try that. But I have to tell you, I really like this. This is kind of a, a fat, fat grip on this thing. And, you know, just setting up on this gun, it's the same setup as my PRS, as my MDT chassis. So it's got the thumb rest here and you know just setting up on this it just feels exactly like i'm shooting my mdt my 6.5 creedmoor so uh, let's get back to the shop look at these results uh, i think they're going to be pretty good and then we'll uh, we'll have some final thoughts back here at the uh, at the shop and remember what we did here right we did the uh, stock strings so we had three five shot uh, strings here on the Midas Plus on the Ely Club and the Ely Match. So these were the results from those. And then what we just shot uh, the other day on the upgraded uh, rifle were the same rounds, the same ammo, Midas Plus, Ely Club, Ely Match uh, at 50 yards. And then we did four uh, strings here. Now, I do want to say something uh, about this. Let's get to the numbers here because I want to explain something to you. Because I, uh, as I was looking at this, I thought, hmm, the first groups were three five-shot strings for each one of the ammos. This last one was four five-shot strings. So I thought, is that really fair? Okay. So when we look at these numbers, and I'm just, I have them on my iPad, I'm going to, I'm going to put them up here. When we look at these numbers, I'm going to tell you what I did. I actually removed the best strings from this, from these shots, these groups. So uh, one of these strings was taken off and I removed the best, not the worst, uh, because I thought, okay, let's, let's compare the three worst strings in this upgrade with the three strings that we shot in the stock. And I hope that makes sense. I didn't want anything to be totally skewed. So if we review this, you can see here that I did the stock, Ely Match, Ely Club, Midas Plus, and we've got uh, the results here, right? So we've got for Ely Match, 1.27 on the five shot, 0.73 on the three shot. Ely Club, we have 1.52 on the five shot, 0.66 on the three shot, minus plus 1.13 on the five shot, and 0.48 on the three shot. Remembering that these are 100 yard MOA numbers because I doubled these 50 yard numbers to get us to an MOA. When we look at the upgrade, we've got the Ely Match at 0.85 five shots, 0.35 three shot, 1.01 .01 on the club, five shot, 0 0.40 on the three shot. And then on the Midas Plus, we've got 1.04 five shot and 0 0.49 three shot. So 
those are all those numbers. Let's look at, at if there were improvements and, and how much. So if you look at that far right, uh, those far right columns, five shot improvement on the match was 33%. The three shot improvement was 52%. Five shot improvement on the club, 33%. Three shot improvement, 40%. Look at the minus plus though at the bottom here. That's surprising, isn't it? It looks like nothing really changed with the minus plus. The five shot improvement was a, pretty good at 8%, but we actually lost accuracy on the three on the best three shot uh, uh, out of that group, the average. So it was very interesting results there. The minus plus didn't seem to care whether you were in the stock chassis or the upgrade, upgraded chassis with all the improvements. Interesting, I thought. One last thing I want to point out here is the fact that if you look at the Ely match and Ely club, look at the price difference here on the very end. The Ely club is half the price, less than half the price of the Ely match, and it performed pretty darn well against that Ely match. Well, final thoughts, let's keep it kind of short, right? Here's all the list uh, somewhere here of everything that we upgraded this thing. We had the chassis upgrade, which was the major piece. We had the trigger, added a compensator, uh, did some things to the chassis with some buttstock extensions, the little knobs here, the bolt handle came out a little more. Uh, and yeah, this thing runs great. Uh, for the money we have put into it, I'm very happy with this build. We just saw where the, uh, the accuracy did improve seem to improve from the stock to this uh, upgraded Tika T1X. So, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we're getting close to 1,000 subscriptions, which is fantastic. And I appreciate all your subscriptions, your likes, the great comments. And uh, I do have the other video coming up. If you notice over here, I think you can see them. I've got seven... Uh, different brands of 22 long rifle that I'm doing the next video on. So now we're going to do uh, a real ammo comparison with the upgraded rifle. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, shoot straight.